it goes after a few couple several months of having a, a tabletop RPG and share it with some of the greatest friends uh, my wife and I tried to leave the country uh, she succeeded and I didn't but I did end up in another city um, and finally I got some of my game resources back and wanted con to continue a game that we started before we left um, and this is that game so we have a lot of characters that may come and go suffice to say before this uh, they destroyed and saved one town uh, blew up another uh, fled joined the mob they're now involved in all sorts of heroic and criminal activity around an imaginary world that I made up we have uh, four large books full of information about we pick up uh, sort of where they left off uh, the last game was kind of a blur it's more of a celebration so we kind of as best we can remember picking up from the last episode and uh, after this they should all be documented as such and we'll continue like exactly where we left off so here we are installment one of long distance D and D dinner theater all right Liz you want to do some stuff because I can handle you if you're ready if you have your character sheet um yeah I've got it I don't so where did where are you gonna put me like where did you decide so that? assuming if if you and Scott actually did leave demons knot and you left from that elf town you would have only been able to sail to Galbraith but we did go to Lenya right that Galbraith, Galbraith is on Linya. Galbraith is one of the towns on East Linya, near the uh, the northern tip of East Linya. But since I'm from here, does that mean that like I went you went know... to Galbraith is the town that you went to college in. You're That's familiar. Why I know that place. You know Galbraith very well. I'm in East Linya. You're on East Linya. That's where we landed. Yeah, you're in the t little top Demon's part up there. Over here. Huh? Demon's not is here, and we sailed over. Yep. You're the top right-hand corner of the port there. So this has got a G on it. That's Galbraith. You nailed it. You figured okay. out my you figured out my secret code. She wouldn't know it, but we both are. Uh, me and Black Jesus are leaving. You Galbraith. just left there. Yep. She yep. would have just yep. missed you guys. This this place has a lot of boat traffic. Uh, there's a lot of adventurers that come and go from here. You would know that uh, whenever you guys left 50 years ago to join the adventure that you're on now, you left from Galbraith. Like I said, this is okay. also where you went to college, um, so you're very familiar with this town, but there's also a lot of young adventurers about. They have very short school semesters here, um, so they encourage, their, uh, they encourage their students to stay here at school for a couple of months, then go out and adventure, and then come back and learn, because they want their students to be part of, you know, to not just learn in school, but learn in the world. Um, so that's one of the reasons that you went out adventuring as a young, as a young kitsune, um, and the reason you ended up where you are now. Um, so you see a lot of young adventurers going on their first adventures right now, leaving on ships. You see ships passing, ships leaving. On one of those ships are your friends. Uh, I don't know that they're on You don't know they're on there, but Black and Star City have just missed you. They have uh, completed a heist in this town. You also don't know that. Uh, but you, you, you just arrived, and as you uh, get off the boat, your brother sort of vanishes into the crowd, as he often tends to do. You assume he slipped on his ring and is just gone. He didn't say anything, but he's just vanished into the crowd or something. Uh, okay. You no longer you no longer see him, uh, but you are surrounded by a bunch of students. You are very familiar with this place. As a matter of fact, you see uh, someone recognizes you right away and is, is waving at you. Oh, um, all right. Well, do they look like a friendly person? Like, are they smiling? Like, they're happy to see me? Perception check. Uh, <laughs> so we have Perception. dice. All right. Thirteen plus. Waving a gun at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a gun. <laughs> I turn around and get back on the boat. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Nope. Come on out. All right, um, 13 plus 6, so 19. All right, so yeah. Uh, you recognize this person, actually. Uh, it's someone that you went to college with, although she looks much older now. Her name well, is okay, Hannah Hawk. Uh, she, she's a human. Her name is Hannah Hawk, so she's about 50 years older than the, when you last saw her. Um, you remember taking art classes with her, um, and she's waving to you from across uh, the port area, like where the boats come in, so on the other side of the dock. Um, alright, well I guess I'm going to walk over and wave back. She has a painted lips and face, she's wearing a lot of makeup, she's got tattoos all over her body, reddish hair. 
And it closes for a spider with paint. Um, her tattoos include things like stars, uh, philosophical quotes, laws of physics and motion, um, the symbol of an atom, things like that. Um, you knew that she was very into science when you guys went to college, but also very into art. Um, she's very focused on her work and attentive to detail, you know that about her. Um, but you also know she's kind of aloof. Um, and she comes running over to you as fast as you can, even though she's a bit older now. Um, and recognizes you right away and is surprised at how young you are and comments on how, how good you look and how you haven't aged a day in 50 years. Um, you know, she asks, what you been up to? How have you been? How's your family? All the, the normal things a, a friendly yeah. person would ask. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll give her, like, the, the G-rated version of what we've been up to. Um, the only family I know anything about is my brother who somewhere. Um, the other part of my family is Genevieve, my, my hawk that's on my, on my shoulder here. Hawk, hawk. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to, classic, don't want to divulge too much information about my self technique. I'm going to divert attention back to her and ask her like what she's been doing. I know, you know, she uh, went to school here with you, of course, and went on adventures of her own, because they were encouraged to do that. She also went on some adventures, she tells you about some of them, Never, none of them seem as exciting as what you've done, but she did go out and explore the world and go to some other cities and things like that. She yeah. fell in love with a miner from the nearby town of Dort, um, but that didn't work out, and she kind of came back here and taught for a while, uh, and then became a citizen, um, and has, been, uh, has retired and has been painting ever since, and now she uh, does uh, living portraits. Uh, she's famous around the world for her living portraits. Um, <laughs> so she's been doing this for years. They have a lot of them on display in the galleries here. And uh, Can I get her to tell me a little bit more about what a living portrait is, please? Okay, a living portrait works like this. Uh, so what she does is she paints someone, and through uh, magic, science, and art, through the power of all three combined, she asks them questions while she's painting the painting. Um, and, not, and some of them are realistic, some of them aren't, some of them are more uh, abstract, it doesn't matter. But she asks them questions while she paints them, and uh, usually 20 questions while she's painting a painting. And then if, if someone asks the painting those same 20 questions, or any one of those questions, they would receive the same response that, that they gave while being asked. And most people, that while she's painting them, are under some sort of truth spell. So you can learn a whole lot about a person if you can ask the right 20 questions to a painting. That sounds incredibly interesting, like something I would want to visit and see, I think. <laughs> okay, well, she says, uh, there's a gallery, she would, love to, she would love to show you what she's been working on and show yeah, you uh, her work. Yeah, I would like to come with me. Yeah, she would gallery. love to take you on a tour of her gallery. Yeah, okay, let's do this. All right, she takes you to her gallery. <laughs> All right, I'm going to look around immediately and see if, uh, how many are there, um, like if there's anyone that I recognize or anyone super important that could be, I don't know, helpful in becoming a badass in this town again All right. because it's gone for so long. I'll say, uh, on your walk over there, she starts talking to you about some of her skills, some of the things she's done. Um, she does animated portraits. She can paint from memory. Um, she can also do uh, painted scrying, so she can scry the future and paint what she sees. What's that mean? Um, scrying is seeing the future, so she can, like, uh, wasn't remember season one of Heroes? <laughs> yeah. Remember the yeah, artist cool. guy that had drew comic books of the future? Oh! Okay. It's like that. Yeah. It's exactly like that. All right, so, uh, she also does commissions for 2000 uh, or sells the ones that she's already made for 1000 gold, but for you, she'll give a discount, of course, because you're old friends. Um, she has paintings in, in, in her storage of all sorts of people. The ones up in the gallery are of more famous have people. Have done any really interesting ones recently? Uh, yeah, she's done a, a lot of, of local notary people, uh, kings, judges, uh, uh, town leaders. Um, she doesn't... Remember meeting anyone uh, of note lately? She's been spending a lot of time alone in her studio. Uh, she was only out today uh, on her way to her studio, uh, and, and she saw you and recognized you and hadn't seen you in a long time. She was just getting some coffee near the port. She will tell you as many people are. I don't think you will recognize any of them yet, though. Um, although there is one of Jim Darling. Um, oh, that bitch. Huh. Uh, there is one of Jim Darling. There are... Uh, a lot of people you don't recognize. There's one of someone she says is called Young Lord Nord, someone called Good Steve, Mammy, uh, Kim Michaels, or Kim Mickles, Doug Derte, Zick Vender, a lot of other just local notables. So a lot of people from Linya. So you haven't been on Linya very long. You haven't been here in 50 years. So a lot of them aren't people that you recognize, although she does have some from other islands. Um, 
mostly the the south the southern islands, Kelnar and stuff. Um, she's got some people from there, um, but she does happen to notice that one of her paintings is missing, and is is startled by this fact, and uh, immediately raises an alarm, and uh, alerts the town guards, and they and they come in and uh, notice yes, this painting is missing, and she fills out a full report, um, and they are now searching. Uh, it was a painting of a judge from Telorix, right? From yep. where? <laughs> from uh, Telorix. Telorix is on the island of Kelnar. Uh, it's uh, like the Wild West type of island where guns and stuff are and judges. It's a big desert island, pretty much. Why does she think that somebody would have stolen that one of all paintings that are in here? Um, she doesn't know, but she says, uh, if you're asking her, uh, roll me a diplomacy check. She'll probably tell you whatever you want to know because you're old friends, but... We're best friends. You don't have to roll very much. Well, you, you're old friends. You did go to college together. No. You, do, you do know her fairly well. You probably had a lesbian encounter. I was about to say, like, yeah. 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 Uh, 12 and 9. So, yeah. So. She has no problem telling you, uh, that she's, uh, had this kind of problems before with the mob trying to steal paintings to get information from them they can use, because a lot of the information these, these paintings know is, is sometimes sensitive information because she does get very intimate with these people while she's painting them, and they usually are under some kind of influence of a truth spell. Um, so she thinks it's, it's someone you trying to get the painting for leverage, because uh, Judge and Telorix is someone you, that you would probably want leverage over to get someone out of trouble. So maybe there's someone in prison they're trying to get out, or some they're trying to bend his will in some kind of case. Um, so her assumption would be that it was someone from the mob, or someone else that's trying to use it for leverage. too much about that because it's like mob stuff and I left mob town right yeah you did you don't have to care so, she's just she's stressed about it yeah and she, she knows you've been around the world but if you if you don't want to help you don't have to help her you know, she, she's talked to the authorities okay, and helping would just entail me going back to mob town alone yeah. to try and get this painting back or yeah, yeah or finding information or something yeah um hmm yeah, no, I'm not too sure I want to chase down a painting. You don't it's have not to. Really, uh, yeah. It's not really a big priority for me. It's got right. nothing to do with, with nature. Well, she, so. She's now uh, busy with the garbage. She, she welcomes you to wander around her gallery um, and encourages you to check out the old artist guild. You're still welcome there because you're once you've joined the artist guild, as long as you remember the handshake, you're sure to get in. Oh, shit. Um, I don't <laughs> <laughs> You might. Roll a knowledge history check. Um, uh, also, you know, as always... She knows that you like uh, always love pursuing learning. Classes at the college are also available. Um, she could probably talk them into giving you a discount rate. Coming back as coming back as an alumni, yeah, probably not very much. So. I have a bank, a bank of many planes account. What does that do for me? I forgot. It's something you put your money in. It's a wallet that you put your money in so that your money doesn't get stolen. It oh, goes right, right. magically into a bank, and you can magically take it out. The are there other people that are in this gallery with us? Um, no, she just opened up for you, so it was early, and no one's come in yet. It's early in the a.m., beautiful sunny day. So how far away from my hometown is this place? Uh, you're a couple hours walk, if you're going to walk. Probably six, eight-hour walk. That's not a couple hours, that's well, six or eight heavy, hours. a heavy couple <laughs> of hours. Um, a few couple. A few horse? couple. You can conjure if you have the magical power to conjure up a horse. You may. I'll cut your time in half. Hmm. So I'm looking. I'm looking at my map here, and I've got. Uh, so you said that this one, not this one, at the top was where I am. Uh huh. So what is the one that's at the top? Since it's close to the place where I went to school, I should know. Right? That's called Erubain. Foresty bit here. In the middle is La Entre de Renard. That's where you're from. And the one at the top of the other port is Erubain. It's a, more of like a human city. But a lot of fox have moved there. Kitsune have moved there. Mostly in the out outskirts of town. I kind of look down upon there. People blame them for the trouble in town. They're like a... People are kind of racist towards Kitsune there, basically. They live in the outskirts. They're kind of ghettoized. But... That's kind of where... That's kind of where uh, Jacques went whenever... Like, whenever you went to college, he went there. That's where he, like, why learned to be a criminal. racist town? Well, that's where a lot of fox <laughs> criminals... Well, a lot of fox criminals go. That's why people hate them there, because there are a lot of fox criminals that go there and, oh, like, okay. steal and, from the humans and live off the scraps of humans and shit like that. give you something to hate. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they, they cause trouble in that town, and then people okay. have a reason to hate them. But so is there, is there tr like, 
trouble in this town, or is this like a super peaceful place and everybody? In Gabbath, yeah, in Gabbath is mostly a town that focuses a lot on education. Um, the only people there are students, so the very young people, and a lot of women. Uh, the only citizens there, only you, can, you can't be a citizen unless you're a woman there. Only women can be citizens. You have to take um, a protector's oath, but val- you know, pr- pr- promising to always protect the city of Galbraith. Most people do not want to fuck with the women of Galbraith because most of them are pretty badass. Most of them are very well learned. Um, yeah, and, and it's also a pretty you know it's a pretty well it's, it's not a very useful town for anything other than its port. Um, they don't have any other resources other than, than people. Really, people come through there, but that's about it. Um, okay. They have a library, but it's not a great library. Um, you know. How do they not have a great library? It's a good library. There's a better library oh, in another town nearby that's famous for its library. This, they have a good library. It's just not an amazing library. Amazing library. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just a college right. library. Uh, so when we were playing before, I wasn't very good about um, just, like, hanging out with Gozera. So I'd like to correct that. Can okay. I find some kind of something that resembles... I mean, Gozer doesn't really have temples. More got like piles of rocks. Yeah, just dishes. Like find some nice. All you have to do is find some place in nature that it looks nice that you like, really. And you can arrange your own rocks there, or put a stick up, or something to make it special. But that's all, all it really right, is. Well, I mean, I guess Genevieve and I are gonna find some way to say what's up to Gozer while we're here. We made it across the ocean without dying. All right, so you leave. You leave the inner part of the city. Because this is pretty much city wall. There are some trees and stuff, but it's not very nature So you you want to go outside the city of Gabbath. You want to go get on your horse and travel towards Air, to so Launcher de Renard. Uh, that's that's a big forest, but in the center of the forest is uh, kind of uh, the place where you grew up. It's not really a town or anything. It's more like a series of homes and trees and in tunnels and things like that in the middle of that forest. Um, tunnels to where? To to little to little holes where people live. Like it's not. Tell us, it's just not the, it's just like little homes. It's just a little fox homes. It's, it's a, like the suburbs. Yeah, it's the suburbs, but it's very nature. It's very like I said. It's uh, more like um, like children's books with animal foxes. Like those. Like it's actual like that. Like dirt with like pictures hung in the oh, dirt cute. and things like that. Like cute. it's very naturey. It's not very. Uh, it's very rural for this kind of a world. It's not a very developed place, but it's uh it's grown up with a thicket around it of, of a sharp thorn, so other creatures can't get in. Um, but it's in the I, middle I of that forest. It's not. It's not the entire forest. It's just in the middle I'll of that forest. It. I'll take it. Let's go. All right, you go there, and, it, oh. and on the way you're there in the forest, you can do some ghost or crap while you're you know going through that yeah. area. It'll help you recharge your spells. Whatever. Um, I mean, you know, just don't kill animals. Just pro- protect animals. Protect animals. Protect nature. You're doing fine. Yeah, yeah. Pay attention to nature. Um, you listen to the wind blow while you're riding your horse. You pay attention to the things around you. You do notice that uh, the forest has grown a lot since you've left. It has been 50 years, so the trees um, seemed taller when you were a kid, but they also seem taller now in a strange way. A lot uh, shorter, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they, things are different. Like the they're, they're, things are more overgrown. There are more weeds than there used to be. Uh, the thorns surrounding your home village are much thicker, and you think you might have trouble getting through them. You probably need to dismount your horse. Can I ask or what's going on with that? If there's like, um, if that's just natural growth. Of plants, or I would know that, right? Because I know like everything about plants. You can roll a knowledge nature or a knowledge religion or something, and I'll tell you whatever you want to know if you rely enough. Right. Twelve. Um. I'll do nature, I guess. Knowledge nature, because I don't have religion. Um, okay. So nineteen. That's pretty good. Um. So. You know uh, that these are pretty thick thorns that, that don't look like they grew naturally. They look like some sort of magical element to them. Just, they don't seem like natural. Because they seem to be growing in a... Uh, I mean, you would know this from your childhood. They, that these have always been here. They just seem thicker than usual. But you know that even as a kid, um, it was always someone from your village, uh, another druid, that was responsible for maintaining this magical wall of thorns to protect the village. Oh, so they're good. They're, they're there to protect the young in the village, because most, yeah, yeah, they're there to protect people in the village, because you guys have very little, you know, to protect yourselves other than the magic of nature in this village. Yeah. And you are a village mostly of druids and peaceful kitsune yeah. folk. but Ghoster is totally cool with these thorns, I don't need to, like, worry about this or anything. They're right? not trying to attack you, but That's they do scary. look thick and pointy. <laughs> So I wouldn't, like, walk, try to walk through them without rolling some sort of check or doing, you know, you could cut them, but that's not very druid of you. No, but you can roll, you can roll a dexterity check to try to get through them without being cut, 
or uh, if use some sort of magic or do something else. I don't know. I can't tell you what to do, but they are oh they God. they do stand in the way of you and your childhood home. So there's got to be like a pathway, right? Um, you would know from your childhood that there are always uh, spots in the thorns that are easier to get through. But you would also know that that changes very often. And if you're not part of the village, which you haven't been in 50 years, you wouldn't know where the current weak spots are. Interesting. Um, and are these the kinds of plants that I can, like, talk to? Or um, get them to just, like... How, how do you... Do you have speak with plants? What do you have... How do you propose to speak with them? With my spells, yo. Um... I haven't memorized everything, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. do anything if you can do it. Uh, well, I got diminished plants. Okay, that would work to, to shrink them, actually, and then you'd be able to pass through. So that's, um, I know I don't have that app anymore to find out how long that lasts. I'm sorry. I'm sure it's long enough for you to pass through them if that's what you're but worried about. it's not about. permanent, right? I mean... Plants, so it'll grow back, but it'll grow back to normal plant time. So it's not killing it, it's just magically pruning it for a while, and then it can grow back at a normal plant rate. All right. I've also got to speak with plants. You can try that as well. I should be like, hey, get out of the way. You may try that if you would like. I mean, I mean it doesn't really matter. Can I just diminish the plants? You can just diminish the plants so off through them, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've chosen the option to diminish plants. You cast the spell diminish plants. They shrink in a way that you're now, you feel like you're able to pass through them with little trouble. Come on, horse. Can I take my horse with me? Horse is welcome here. I would know I mean, that. you can, but it's going to be harder for your horse to get through than you. I would still make your horse roll something, but you don't need to. It's a magical horse. You don't need you your horse, horse in town. You can, be like, yeah. you can call him later. You can, can, take, a, you like can take a nap snap. here. Like, send it away. You can, but it's going to vanish because it's magical. It's not going to, like, go live a life or anything. No. It's not like a free horse now. It's a magical horse that doesn't really exist. Yeah, okay. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna you can spank it all you want. Yeah. I'm going to be like, Ugh. Uh, it'll, it'll slowly, it'll slowly vanish while you pet its face. No, no, no! I gave it a because you said that um, they vanish whenever they're done doing the job or whatever that they. Or, okay, so I'm gonna yeah. tell it wait for me. Okay, okay it'll wait if you want to wait. It'll wait for me. It will wait if that's what you'd like it to do. Yep. yep. I don't. I have no problem with that. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go into the village. All right, so you've passed through the living thorny vines. Um, and reach the compound. Uh, that's like I said, many homes with burrows and little tree houses. A little What's business, going on? What's going little around? business, regular homes. There's a lot of very young foxes um, in the center of town. There's a gathering circle, which you're very familiar with, where the casinos around tell stories. It's where the little casino, little, little casino, do school. Those are all the activity where they drink, where they have meals. Um, everyone in this town kind of does everything as a group. Um, so the gathering yeah. circles are kind of where everyone does everything. There's lots of friendly animals like cats, badgers, goats, uh, like just a bunch of small animals: thrushes, weasels, falcons. Bunch of adorable shit. You're just in the land of adorable Disney little f- tweeting birds. Everything seems happy here and wonderful. Birds. <laughs> yeah, it's all zippity doo dah. Um, and right now, there's a group of children. There's a group of children gathered um, in the in the gathering circle, um, and there's someone telling them a story. She's telling them the story of the Vulpinal Agony, the Vulpinal Agiathon, um, which is a a danger for all Kitsune, and while she warns them to never leave the den, never to leave the fox's lair, because if they leave and they go out in the forest, they're in danger of being hunted by the Vulpinal Agiathon, which looks like a fox if it's is very dangerous. Um, so can I, like, am, can I do the, like, classic camp counselor thing and, like, sneak up behind them and go, Rawr! Because I look like a fox. <laughs> yes. You may. Uh, roll me a diplomacy check when you do that. Um, okay. This is going to turn out to be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on check. 17 and 9. Oh, yeah, you do fine. They all scream, um, but the teacher you know laughs. But the teacher oh. laughs and says, uh, uh, and says your name. Um, and you look and you realize that the person uh, telling the story is your sister. Rose, ah! uh, Rose Aubrey. <laughs> Although she looks a little bit older and has a gray streak in her fox okay, hair okay. now. Yeah, it's your twin. It's your twin sister. And for those of you questioning the Vulpinal Agathon, um, it's uh, known for having black socks. So it has like it's a, a fox with black feet and perked ears and whiskers. 
Um, it looks like a small humanoid fox, so it walks upright, but it kind of still looks like a fox. Um, it has loose cl tro clothes, and it's kind of dirty. Um, and it, but its feet and hands are still its feet and hands are still like paws, like a fox, unlike a kitsune who have human, more like hands. Um, it has supernatural like amber eyes and plays a golden flute, and it always uh, has a creeping melody. It's known to like lure away children, and that's what they warn, warn the kids not to leave the the safety of the village because that thing might get them. But your sister, of course, is happy to see you. Uh, flip her. Uh, she, like I said, she looks the same. She looks just like you, except she's 50 years older and has got some gray in her hair. Has okay. wide old eyes. Um, uh, you can tell from the clothes she's wearing and the fact that she was sitting around telling a story that she's what is known as the Din Mother. Um, so she is replaced... She is replaced... Yeah, well, she's like the oldest woman in the village now, and so she's uh, charged with taking care of all the children. She's like a, the great matriarch of the village now. Oh, no, that means our parents are dead. That does mean your parents are dead. They have a very nice grave nearby. If you ask her about it, she'll tell you. It's very lovely. It's covered with flowers. Um, they're given a natural burial, but they are buried nearby uh, in, the, in the woods. Burial. They're buried in the woods where the, all of the relatives are buried in, in, the, in the relative plot of land in the woods nearby. Um but yeah, they are dead. Um, some, of, a lot of your brothers and sisters have also been hunted and killed. Uh, apparently, after you left fifty years ago, um, there was some great dragon attacks and a bunch of other stuff happened. People blamed the Kitsunes and started hunting them, so they've become a lot more reclusive. Um, a lot of them still live in the city of Arobane, um, in the darkness, hiding. Uh, but a lot of them are hunted, so a lot of them don't leave the forest. Uh, Did you make this story so that I get to combat racism, Brian? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you get to come out racism all by yourself. Um, you but yeah, they're being shot at when they leave the forest, so it's very dangerous <coughs> to be a kitsune in this area. Um, so she's surprised you got here safely. Uh, but she's glad to see you, and it's been a long time, and you look, of course, you haven't aged a day in 50 years. What have you been doing? How have you? How, why do you look so great? All that stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> Moisturize. There we go. Yeah. The trick is, you exfoliate every other day. <laughs> the trick is, right. you vanish for 50 years. Good. Uh, yeah. 50 years worth of exfoliation. <laughs> Crush up some walnut shells. It's magic, girl. Right. But you're now here with your sister. She's the dead mother. She has a child of her own named Kit. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to go meet the kid. Uh, I know Jacques just left, but his twin brother is rumored to be alive, which is also your brother, but his twin brother is rumored to Can be alive. Here? Uh, he's rumored to be alive in Arobane, leading the rebellion there. Um, and Arobane is this one that's up here, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you have a brother that's there, you have a nephew here, you have some other cousins and nephews that probably live in Arobane, the surrounding area. Um, but Kit and your sister are your only family that are here in this town right now. There, there's some other relatives, like uncles and, you know, like people that are just family from being, that live mm -hmm. here, but not close family. Um, so her and Kit are your closest, and Kit has a best friend that he's playing with right now. You see them kind of, that's, she said, that's my son over there, and he's playing with his best friend. They seem to be uh, late teenage year Kitsune, um, 16, oh, 18, that kind of, 16, 18, in that kind of, 16, 18, that kind of age. Get on some missions? You may. Uh, he might be interested in that, actually. Oh, I can tell you a little bit about him if you like. Um, well, what I want to do is, um, so the parents are bio-burial, yeah? Yep. Uh, can I go with? Uh, Rouge to the grave or whatever. So yeah. I can introduce them to Genevieve. She'll she'll take uh, you and and Kit. She'll make Kit come along too. And I'll ta I'll tell them about Jacques and like we've had some really great adventures. He's on the island. He could be standing here right now. We have no idea. Um, I think I'm doing a fairly good job keeping him out of trouble. But now that I hear, now that I've, you know we've come back and like heard about all of this racism, I mean after after being such a world traveler and realizing that everybody bleeds red, um, I'm not down for this in my uh, in my island town. So I think I'd like to do something about it. And because there is because they're bio burial or whatever, and we're all druids. Gozra is in on this conversation with us. Sure, Gozra can hang. Yep, Gozer's hanging out with all of the Kitsune people, talking to their dead moms. The wind's blowing, the trees are doing the, the leaves are doing the thing, and the trees' leaves do. Okay. Yeah. So, um, can I get, like, some tea or something?
comes in with my twin and kind of talk to her about, I guess, maybe like the unresty situation. and like Yeah, uh, she picks some local herbs and mint and stuff from, from the surrounding area and you sit at the, the, the grave and she makes a small fire and a brews a cup of tea and you sit and talk. What did you want to talk about? Just like... Because a lot of bad things have happened over 50 years. I want to know, like, any kind of current resistance efforts or something that they have that I could be helpful with. Because I didn't leave a warrior, but I did do a lot of, like, fighting and stuff out there. And I'd like to be helpful. A little bit of, like, retribution back to the village because I totally peaced out and then all this bad stuff happened to them. Um, she says, uh... And also Jock's really pretty badass, too, so he'd be helpful. I mean, I'll make him. Their preferred method is peace, and they try to stay out of it. They try to stay hidden here, and they just tell their children not to leave. And she says, but just like you and Jacques, uh, some kitsune always end up leaving because they want their freedom. They don't know that we're they don't know that we're doing what's best for them and trying to protect them, and they want to go out in the world. And we can't stop them. And she says, uh, you c- you can do what you want, uh, but if you're doing that, you'll be doing it out there, not in here. And I, yeah, have, yeah. I have no advice for you for what to do out in the world. I, I, I would advise you to stay here and, and stay safe. Boring. Um, I agree. So, what's Not up, her, Kit? but me as you, a uh, How do you feel about this, um, buddy? Okay, Kit is reddish brown fur. He's, like I said, young. He's got great blue eyes. Seems to be daydreaming a lot of the time when you guys were talking. His head's kind of in the clouds. But he loves the he seems to love the idea of adventure. He really is also hungering for adventure. You could tell he's at that age where he wants to leave the den, even though his mother really would not like him to. Um, so he gets in trouble for hanging out with a kitsune. He kind of gets treated differently because his mom is the den mother. You kind of tell that he that that happens. Um, the expectations are very high of him. Um, he's very smart and he's very good with animals. You know, he's playing with animals now. Um, but he does want, you can tell he wants to escape home or, you know, have adventures. But his mom is very overprotective. You know that about her. And she does, she wants him to stay. Um, so have, in having this conversation, you realize that he wants to go, but she wants him to stay. Yeah, okay. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, she does kind of realize that it's, like, his decision, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's at the age where it's he can decide on, on his own. But she, so he's you know, not, like, a baby or like a kid. No, it's a, like I said, it's in his late teens. 16 to 18, somewhere in that range. Probably closer to 18. He's at the age where he would be able to decide to leave the den for himself. I just don't want her to be like angry at me after like... I mean, she might still be angry at you if you're taking her baby away from her, but... <laughs> but he's able to choose. Well, I mean, you, you came and now he's leaving with you if this happens. So, I mean, she can see it any way she wants is what I'm saying. Well, I don't... I don't really want him to, I don't want us to just like, you know, hey, okay, bye, and like run off and start stabbing people. I do, I mean, I think we need to get more of an understanding of like what's actually happening, what would be helpful, why people are killing Kitsune. Okay, she says, uh, it seems like it's just hunting season on Kitsune. Uh, It seems that the criminal element in Aerobane got a bad rap, and when things started going sour in the surrounding area... Uh, about 50 years ago, just after you left, there were lots of dragon attacks and other horrible things started happening. Uh, there was a great... Are still dragon attacks now? Um, they've kind of settled down now. They they managed to kill most of the people of Arrow Bane. Uh, went on a very, like, dragon-heavy couple of years there. They hunted down most of the dragons. There's a lot of famous dragon warriors living in Arrow Bane. They have a whole lot of culture about dragon hunting there. Um, so that's something they're famous for is dragon hunting. So they were able to hunt down most of the dragons, so the dragons aren't a problem anymore. But there was also an implosion 50 years ago after you left. Uh, the White Castle, as it's known, which was the great castle of East Linya, uh, imploded. Yep. Uh, okay. Since then, uh, they've rebuilt the wall around it, and it's rebuilt, but uh, it was never really explained what happened. They think there were some sort of ulterior forces of, of the West that, that started it. So at that point in time, they also built the wall. There's now a wall dividing East and West Linya. Um, so oh. they built that wall then, so there's been a whole lot that's changed since you left. Uh, the wall, the new castle, the dragons coming, the dragons dying, it's all happened in 50 years. Um, some of the other cities have been affected as well, she doesn't know how, you know, they're kind of isolated, so she doesn't have as much information about them, but almost every part of this area was probably affected after you guys left 50 years ago. A whole lot of things changed. Um, you would know that was probably the time that the first crystal was found, so it's probably has yeah, something to do with people affecting the magic of the crystals, so the world was just in a lot of upheaval at the time. All right, so what time of day is it? What's, there, what's 
uh, where are all the uh, by the time you've heard the story and visit the grave and stuff, it's probably late afternoon now. So everybody's like gonna have dinner or something as like a big group. Lunch or yeah, yeah, they would probably eat in the gathering circle. After your teas, you can go have enjoy a, a small trail mix type of lunch with the rest of the group. Uh, Some hippie, hippie granola you know. shit. Granola. Love granola. Yeah, you get a bunch of that. Bark. <laughs> Yeah, chewing leaves. some bark and leaves. Oh, yeah. yeah, um... Very peaceful. So, what I want to do is... Everyone's she's a vegan. Not very, I mean, she's kind of helpful, but not incredibly helpful, so I'd like to, I guess, like, talk to some other kitsune e people. Let me see something. Um, um, like, I'll say because she's your sister, <clears throat> uh, she takes, she tells you, she, you know, you know she's a gardener. She's tended a garden for a long time. She says she started a garden in your memory. Um... So you're okay. welcome. She says you're welcome to have anything from the garden that you need. Um, so maybe before just walking out on your sister like that, you should check some other shit out. Because she does have some things for you. Um, she also did some traveling before the wall was built, after you first left. Um, she searched for you and Jacques. Um, oh. but Ended up stranded on a strange, uh, strange island after she was shipwrecked. Um, she survived in the woods, learned how to uh, woodcraft out of necessity and build a boat or a raft and was able to make it back to the West Coast. High five, girl. Yeah. Only to find out when she got back that war had broken out. Um, she was able to sneak back across the border. Um, and found That's when she found that most of the Kitsune had been hunted and killed and captured. And that's when she vowed to protect the remaining families and became the leader of the Dim Mother. Um, and had a child and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. She married? Um, or, like, she she was, but her husband has been killed. He's been he was killed by a hunter. One of them. Okay. She's pretty powerful, but she's probably not going to leave the den. So you're right; she's not useful for much else. But she does yeah, yeah. she does give you access to her garden. Um. Yeah. Whatever else you may need. Well, I mean, can I like I guess do some plant identification and stuff and figure out if anything was enough for me to take then if I can just have whatever I want yeah everything in her garden looks useful to take it seems mostly uh, for healing potions and uh, positively aligned alchemical potions things like that all right um, you have what you need to make three cure moderate potions you still have to make them but you have the ingredients for them you have what you need to make three scent cloaks you have what you need to make three blood blocks She'll stop bleeding. Like a stabilized potion? Yep, pretty much. Wait, three blood block? Yep. She's block blood. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Blocks of blood. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have uh, three uh, diplomacy tea mixes. So whenever you drink them, you get a plus one diplomacy with whoever you're drinking the tea with. And you have uh, one sleeping potion with a DC 15 will save to resist. So can I make these, or will I have to find someone to make them for me? Uh, do you have any kind of crafting skills or anything? What do you have? Do you have alchemy? No, you can't make this stuff. You can, uh, you have, I thought you had some kind of, what were, you have something, biology, you had some kind of thing, so I thought we had talked about this before, the reason you had all this nature plant stuff, you're looking for plants, maybe you were just getting them for Cersei before, I think it's maybe why, though. I think you were identifying plants and then giving them to Cersei, but you can yeah, still do that, you can save these things and get them to Cersei and she can make stuff for you, or you can find an alchemist that can alchemy them for you, if you don't have alchemy as a skill. Or you can go to school and learn how to make potions. But. Um... So cool. Thanks, sis, for all this stuff. You're, you're awesome. Um, she is. So, the thing that I wanted to do in the, like, circle, the, whatever, wherever, the, the gathering circle, circle. The gathering yeah. Circle, everyone is, um, was, like, talk to someone besides her. Okay. To get an idea of, like, how, like, revolutionary everybody's feeling, and if there's been any kind of most of the people in the gathering circuit circle and most people in Lancha du Renard uh, are homebodies. They're people that like it here, that have no intention of leaving, or they're young children who can't leave until they're older. So a lot of the kids seem really excited about one day leaving, but a lot of the adults seem like they like it here and have no intention of 
it's safe here and they would rather just stay here and live this life than than deal with people out in the real world. Right. Um, and there are some people going in the circle gambling, of course. There's some people selling, you know, fruit, vegetables, and meat and thing like things like that. Around the, yeah, yeah. Potatoes, bread, yogurt, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. there, there, there are food vendors kind of around. That's the, the, getting kind of later now, so there are food Lots vendors coming out. People are, people are starting to drink and gamble. People are starting to eat and, drink, eat and drink and gamble and things like that. Um, but there are, other, there are other things for sale as well if, if you're interested in a smithy and um, they poop up. Is there any particular advantage to me, like, buying something from here because it's... I mean, every town you go to that I have designed has things that aren't available anywhere else, but that's also if you can afford them. And but this is, like, hometown advantage, so, like... You might be able to talk them down. Yeah, you did come from here. Maybe the guy that runs the store has a crush on you. I don't know. He's, like, a creepy old man now, though. Yeah, totally. He's, like, 50 <laughs> years older, but he still really has a crush on you because you still look 50 years younger. He's like, damn, girl. Yeah, yeah, you look good. <laughs> 50% off. <laughs> Diplomacy check. Yeah, what? Yeah, I'll give you a diplomacy check for getting a deal. What's that? Um, this is not meant to be metagaming. This is just my personal knowledge. The diplomacy tea, does that, do you need alchemy for that, or can you just throw it in water and drink it like tea? You can just throw that in water and drink it like tea. Okay. Ooh. So that one you can still do. Okay. But the rest you would need alchemy for. Because that one's easy to make. You, you know you, the sir. ingredients. You know the ingredients for that one, because you have knowledge of nature to know the ingredients, and that's not, you don't have to have special chemicals to make that, yeah. Or a special setup. Yeah. I got three diplomacy teas. But hey, Liz, if you ever use the diplomacy tea, I think you should also be drinking tea in real life. <laughs> yeah. Make it realistic. That's your chance yeah, to get tea. Yeah, I have a tiny tea. tea today. What? I know. That's what, co- what country are you in? Yeah, exactly. Like I'm just kidding. That didn't go anywhere. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I are across the room from each other. That would be nice. That would be very nice. Um, all right. Well, I don't feel like this uh, building up a grassroots army thing is going to happen here. You have a better chance of finding people that are already rebellious in Arabane. Like I said, there is there is a Kitsune population there that are already kind of troublemakers and acting out. So there is an active rebellion there. There are even what they call turncoats, which are humans that, that kind of side with Kitsune. They kind of live on the outskirts of town also. It's usually the poorer humans in town. Okay. Um, they live Say in the same the name areas. Of town again? Erubane. Erubane? Erubane. 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 So all of those people are, those are like humans, yeah? Uh, for the most part. I mean, like, so there's Kitsune is there, humans. Uh, but the humans are racist against the Kitsune. A lot of them are. Not like I said, there are some they call turncoats that aren't, but there are a lot of them that are. A lot of the richer and more noble, or wealthy class are very racist towards Kitsune. They blame the Kitsune for a lot of the problems in their town, <coughs> for the decline in their economy, like all kinds of things. I'm just gonna write if there's a problem, they blame the Kitsune. All right, Liz, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you time yeah, to I'm ruminate. Gonna I'm, what, I'm gonna give you time to ruminate on what you want to do next. Now that you've met these people, and uh, if you want to go inter- interview in Arabian or whatever. I'm going to let you ruminate and get uh, to these fellows over here. Mm-hmm. Deal with you without Roach there, Pat, because uh, you can still do things. Um, you're kind of in charge. He's just watching over you. We can assume that he's still there doing his accounting, but it's not interfering in any way. Um, yeah. Roll me a... You were back on the island of Reyes, of course, plotting yeah. on how to get this crystal, because that's your job. You yeah. know that there's someone out there protecting it. You have talked with the council. You are yeah. you now know them all by name. Um so you have a way to contact them. You have all the contracts that you have and all the stuff you have. Um, but roll me a knowledge arcana for some int- some knowledge you might need to know currently. All right. I got a 12 plus 0, so 12. <laughs> well, that's going to be a wisdom. Sure. Well, I have a 0 wisdom. Uh, never mind. It. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What's your what, what, what class are you? I'm a cleric. Okay, so that's going to help. It's going to help that you're a cleric, because 12 is not very good. No, But because you're a cleric, and because you're working with trolls, and because, you're, because you do what you do, and you or have your backstory that you have, uh, you do know that if you're able to collect the troll bones from around the tower, okay. 
you can scribe runes into them. And if you're able to do this properly, which will require another Knowledge Arcana check that hopefully is higher than a 12, if you're able to inscribe the runes properly, uh, you can make create magic troll bones. Which, uh, once you have the runes uh, engraved upon them, and you have to char the bones as well, so you have to burn the bones and then put runes on them. Uh, but then you can toss the bones up to 20 feet, and they grow into a full-size troll that remains uh, active for 2d4 rounds. Okay. Longer if you longer if you have a bard doing a bardic performance, but if not, it just turns into a troll for two d four rounds. So you have you know some temporary trolls at your disposal if you need them if you can collect the bones. All right. Um, can I use my knowledge arcana, or do I need to go collect the bones first? You have to collect them first, and then to try to do the runes, you have to do knowledge arcana. You just do knowledge arcana to remember that, and only because you're a cleric that I let you remember that because it's pretty low. Okay. Very funny. Paylor is in control of the town, and he killed the rest of the council, right? Why did he do that? I don't remember that. That's I don't possible. remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that either, but I, didn't, I don't have my notebook, so you tell me. Or, how, well, how did that happen? Remind me, and then I'll know well, if I can believe you or not. Well, he, he signed his soul for the wish, and he wished that he had the army to control the town. And he, he did wish he'd have an army to control the town, and there is an army being delivered uh, right now from Westport. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, uh, there's an army coming. So he has ordered an army, and he is pretty much in, he's taken like a, a military dictatorship type of role. Yeah, I don't okay. know. That he's, I don't know that he's had to kill everybody, but he has taken more power. Because I thought he launched them at the tower because I asked to um, control the army, and Kyle like talked me out of it or whatever because he was like, uh, "I don't want this guy to control you." So, like, they attacked the tower and Frodrick fended them off again. Cause, like, the whole army? Yeah. That's crazy. I don't remember that. Like, That's possible. Like, he fended them off because he touched the ball at last because they... No, that was with the that was with the trolls the first time you guys came is when he touched the, the, the ball and killed the trolls that were there. That was an army of trolls. Well, that was the, um, the first one, but this last one he had his, um... Guardians or whatever the sentinels were in the fucking staircase that all the trolls went up around, and Will yeah, but that was that was still trolls, which was not the army. The army he's getting now is a uh, an army of elven gear gearwork people from okay. West Le- Westport. So he's he's got a whole army coming. That 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 was something. That other uh, army of trolls was still with you guys. Uh, okay. This is his army's coming now. It's being delivered at this point in time. But he has, like I said, taken a military dictatorship type of role. He is more in charge than he probably. Because yeah. Froderick's Cause, gone. Because we got his soul. Um, yeah, you have his. He signed a contract. Like the um, your, the people that you report to have his soul. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you've All done right. your job by getting someone to sign a contract. So nice. you will be rewarded for that. Um, All right. Your your reward your reward comes uh, in the fact after after you sent the scroll through that is after he signs his it vanishes in a puff of smoke and another one replaces it. Uh, this one's not a contract though. It's just a note. Uh, if you want to read it, you can. Sure. Do I need to do a perception roll? No, you can just read a note. I yeah, assume I assume you could see a piece of paper in front of your face. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's in a language you can understand because it's written to you. Um, it says, uh, "Good work getting control of someone on the council. Uh, still waiting on news of the orb. Uh, once orb is received, uh, please contact." Uh, you need to release the orb. We need to move the orb uh, to Westport. He says uh, when the troops are delivered from Westport, you need to be you need to have the orb by that point in time. By the time the troops get here, you need to have the orb, and you need to be on that boat taking it back to Westport. Okay. Those are your orders. Um, with it uh, comes a flaming dagger. Ooh, flame on. Yeah. Is it yeah the same flame old thing? Same you can you can say whatever magic words you want, but yeah, same same principle, same damage, all that same stuff. Uh-huh. Same weapon basically, but you can create a new word if you want, or you can say flame on again, Just normal flame dagger like you used to have. But that's uh, your that's your reward for getting this guy from the council. But they still are expecting the orb, and they're expecting it soon before this army arrives. All right, well I'll go collect the troll bones. All right. You leave through the west gate and walk down the path, past the old man's cabin, uh, to the tower. 
where you know all your trolls were slain. You see a bright light shining out of the shower. You know Frederick's up there. You probably see him laughing maniacally or something. Yeah. Um, and you're praying, ah. and you're praying he does not sense you nearby. Um, and oh, you, I, I need you to roll. I need you to roll a stealth check to not be noticed by him. As a matter of fact, because you're coming really close to his aura right now. All right. Yeah. Do you have a perception up there, uh, Will, for Frederick? Yeah, I should. Hang on. Let me check him real quick. Because what we're gonna do is do a versus check right now. So it'll be your roll of perception versus his roll of stealth. So. All right. I have all of his stuff written down somewhere. Is there any way I could pray to Vortiga for extra, or not Vortiga? Pray to myself. I pray to myself, motherfucker. That's some real hella shit right there. <laughs> of my own god. Yeah. Roderick has a perception of plus eight. All right, so. And he gets a twenty-one. Sorry, you gotta roll a stealth higher than twenty-one to not be noticed by him, there, uh, Mister Vortiga. All right. Well, I rolled a uh, 12, so that's going to be 17. All right, so Frodick, from within the tower, you uh, you do notice a presence outside. Uh, it doesn't seem to be approaching the tower or entering the door, but you do notice it nearby. Uh, you can't tell if it's hostile or not. Like I said, it doesn't seem to be attacking you, but you do sense a, a living force outside of the tower. You just sense it. All right. Well, then... You can remain in your tower and do nothing, or you can investigate. It doesn't matter to me, but you do. This is the knowledge you have, is, as Froderick does sense something with his mystical powers. All right. Um, let's see here. What uh? What all can Froderick do when he's in the presence of this the crystal? Well, he's able to scry pretty much anything within a certain yeah. area. So he can pretty much even just, if he wants to see what's outside, he can just look at the crystal and see. He doesn't even have to go downstairs if you want to do that. He can also uh, use it to do a lot of large magical type effects. Um, it's hard for him to control because he doesn't have a, lot, he doesn't have a magical background. Like, you you know, uh, he has no experience with magic. He was just a fighter. So for him, it's a lot on impulse. A lot of it will be he won't know what he's doing, but he might accidentally cause an earthquake or a sun flare. or a, So it's hard for him to control. So it wouldn't be spells you could cast, but he could make he could make things happen just by willing things to happen, uh, as long as he's in proximity to the crystal. Especially if he's right now, like right next to the crystal. The farther right. he's away from it, the less of that he has. All right. Well, but he would be uh, he I would be stronger. Sure. You've already upgraded him mythically, right, to make him stronger. Yeah. And all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He has all that. He has all that stuff no matter where he goes. But as long yeah. as he's touching the crystal, he can have all kinds of other mysterious magical effects. He just doesn't really know how to control them. Okay. Is there any way I could cast? Uh, summon monster and send it into the tower as a distraction to like make him think something's entering the tower, but it's not me. Yeah, you can summon a monster and send it into the tower. Yeah, so I'd like to summon. I am a level one caster, so I get. That sounds promising. I summon a dolphin. <laughs> uh, basically, I was going for dolphin, perhaps, but I will summon. Uh, you got like an imp or something? That'd be a good one just to cause trouble. Imps are good because they can get it, you know, you can just get out, you can dodge a lot for a while. Um, well, I only, let me double check because I think I have something like that, but I'm pretty sure I only have like a horse. So, sort of like a fire beetle. I know, real quick. I can do minor monster. Can we do ultimate magic spells? Hold on, let me look real quick. Hold on a second. So, monster one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You don't have anything really great. Snake, yeah. pony, beetle, dolphin, dire rat. Dire rat's probably your most formidable thing. And that's not gonna be, I mean, you'll be able to wipe that out in like a hit. Yeah. Uh, so it would be a great distraction, no. It's level. It's second level that has the good stuff. Lemur is what you. I was thinking of. You have yeah. to be second level to do that. Um... Well, I mean, that'll at least give me some time to uh, move away from the tower for a minute. So you're going to send a rat in? Yes. All right, you summon a dire rat, and it runs up the stairs. Uh, Froderick senses a second life force, and he senses this life force entering the tower. I'm going to sense motive. All right. Oh, it's going to be a 21. Uh, you sense confusion. 
As the creature entering the tower seems to not know why it's doing it, but it's running up the stairs. As if it's under the, uh, the, the order of some other creature. It doesn't know why. It's just doing what it's told. It's following uh, orders, is what you sense. It doesn't, seem uh, to be, it doesn't seem to be a threat. It's not attacking, but it is running up the stairs. It might attack if it sees you. Uh, but it's got a while till it reaches the top of the stairs. Alright, well, I guess I'm going to uh, stand in front of the crystal and wait. Alright, you wait. I need, I need a thing to flip. I, right, I continue to uh, try to see if I can gather some bones around right. a little bit further out from where I was initially grabbing the bones. Alright, roll me a, a dexterity check to gather bones quickly. Okay. See how dexterous you are. Damn it. Uh, that's going to be a 11. Okay, so you grab some bones, but not a whole lot. Um, you're able to grab, uh, roll me a d20. I'll give you a d20's worth of bones. Alright. Uh, 13. Alright, so you have 13 troll bones that you still have to, you still have to char and carve, but... You have 13 bones that you can potentially make into magical troll bones. Okay. If you want to flee now while your rat's still running upstairs, you may flee at your high speed. Okay. If you live in fear of Froderick, do you flee in high speed? Um, yes. I believe. Uh, I don't really have. Um, no, no, no. I better leave. Yeah, I'll leave. All right. I, that is my final decision. I will leave. All right. <laughs> you flee at high speeds uh, before Froderick deals with the rat. Rat finally makes his way upstairs and tries to attack you. Uh, you want to roll for initiative? I mean, you're going to kill this rat. We can do the whole dance if you want. I'll roll for initiative. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. I got 17. Yeah. You're gonna, I only got 10, so you got me. All right. So the rat dives at you. I forgot right, we had a Swing at him with my uh, longsword. All right. And my BAB and takes it to 15. All right, you hit, totally hit this rat. <laughs> All right, and that's going to be a D8 plus 2. That's going to be uh, 10 damage. It's dead. It only has 5 hit points, so it's dead. Alright. So dead. Um, then can I do a... It vanishes after you kill it. Uh, Alright, I wanted to roll some knowledge on it. I want to see if I can figure out where this shit came from. Well, by the fact that it vanished, you know that it was a magical dire rat that someone probably summoned. Alright. So you know it was uh, not, a, not a, a real rat that just came up and tried to attack you. Someone sent this rat. Um, and you sense that the other presence that you sensed earlier is now I gone. there. So you sense, right. you sense it was probably a distraction, or you don't you don't seem it seem to be you didn't think this was a real attack because someone would have sent something stronger than a, a rat they were trying to attack you. They sent trolls last time, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So you sense that this was probably just a distraction. Whoever it was sent this and then ran. Okay. You, you, well, no, you no well, longer I'm, sense another being near you. All right. Well, um, I'm gonna still. He's a little got a little crazy going on. Yeah. So he's gonna see this as even if it was a, a minor attack, someone's probing him. He's going to touch the crystal and try to call some mayhem on the island. All right. Let's try to call some may- mayhem. Roll me a percentage die. All right. So, like, good stuff could happen. Like, like I'm hoping, like, don't, I'll get, like, some sort of protective barrier or stuff to fall away from around me. But then again, I could also open up a giant hole in the middle yeah, of the city. Yeah, anything could happen, depending on what you All are right, right now. <laughs> Hurricanes. Sun flares. Bring it on. 81. All right. That's actually okay. Um... You sort of get what you want. Uh, out from the orb comes a bright glowing fire that irradiates the uh, area around it. Um, and now a 30-foot radius around the tower is burning in a continual flame. So to even approach the tower, to approach the tower, you have to take fire damage or find some way to get over the flame. So as long as Froderick is concentrating and has his hand on the crystal, until he lets go of the crystal, there's going to be a continuous 30-foot parameter of, of burning flame that does 1d6 per round if you touch it. Uh, All right. fire is it inside the uh, like spiral staircases on fire, too? 
or is it just like it seems to be just, it seems to be just the area of the ground around it. The inside seems to not be on fire, just the area around the tower. So thirty feet just surrounding the tower. Okay. Is it? Uh, could you put it out with water? It seems to, well. I mean, this is it funny thing questions asked without knowledge or cannon without you being there? Yeah. Um, well, I'll. Uh, can I go back? From I can the tell Froderick. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the fire from far away if you want to try it and see if you can discern something from it. Do you have a looking glass, or do you need to go back closer to get information? I have a knowledge arcana, so I'll... Can Are I you going to try to get close enough, or do you have some way to see it from far away? I or I test it from far away? Something. I'll make it a beer while you find out. Okay. So take your time. No, I don't have any goggles. I just have dark vision up to 60 feet, so... I'd have to get back closer to yeah. see the fire. Um, do you want to try and stealth back closely to see what's going on? I mean, yeah. Alright, so roll me a stealth check versus another perception check. Alright. Oh, fuck me. Uh, 19. I assume yours uh, was lower than 19. I got a 14. All right, so uh, Frodo's going to notice you approaching again. You do have time to roll your Knowledge Arcana check, but he's going to notice you're there. All right. While you do it. Fuck me. Oh. Yeah, that's a six. That's going to be uh, uh, eight. So just from looking at the fire, you can't tell anything. But okay. if you want to know an old trick, if you throw water on it and it doesn't go out, it's magical. Do you have water on you? Um, I can cast it. From your penis. <laughs> I mean, I can I can assume you would know that if you want to try that and see. But I'm gonna during that time if you do that, Furtick's gonna have time to respond to you being there if he wants. He knows you're there now. I gave you time to do the arcana check. So at this point, if Furtick wants to respond to you being there, he is able to. But you can also, while he's responding, cast the water. But if Furtick wants to respond to the uh, presence so outside, I'm going to leave. So my motive will be to walk away. All right, Furtick, you you notice the uh, whatever presence that approached again, walking away again. All right. Well, I'm gonna stare into the orb and I'm gonna scry the presence that was walking away from the tower. All right. Roll me a perception check. It's gonna be high again. I'm sure you got a pretty high perception. Oh yeah, I do. That's gonna be a twenty. Oh yeah. Uh, you're able to very easily make out the shape of this female hobgoblin. Uh, that seems to be kind of hanging around the general area, acting suspicious. Alright. You see, you see her leaving now, very quickly it seems, but... Yeah, alright, well... You seem to sense, you seem to sense that was the same presence that was there before, probably the same presence that was in charge of the dire rat. Like, you recognize this, when you see it, this is the same presence you experienced before. Alright, well then, I mean, they didn't, there was no... Probing besides just walking up to the fire, so I'm um, yep. so approaching the left. This, this one, Alright. Yeah. Alright, Vortiga, you leave the tower. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the end um, and try to hang around and see if I can find anybody that's kind of looks uh, mentally susceptible to like a uh, not a bribe. But just like they're kind of down on their luck, they could use a wish. Okay, uh, <laughs> I mean, this town's full of, a lot of people are down on their luck recently. A lot of people have died in this town recently. They've had a lot of earthquakes and crazy yeah. ghost summon, like all kinds of crazy stuff's happened. You know this town. You've been here. They've had, everyone's kind of had a hard time. There's a lot of people drinking at the taverns nearby. That's probably a better place to find someone that's down on their luck than at the inn where you can't see anyone that's not really in your room. Um, but if you want to leave your room and go down to the tavern downstairs or next door, uh, that would work. And there's probably someone there that's down there. Luck, you looking for any type of poor, rich, does it matter? Uh, kind of poor that's just, you know, just had a really rough time. Uh, you know, their family could die, have died or something, lost their oh, job. We got that. them. Tons of those guys. All right, yeah, yeah. so there, there was a, there's an old brown shirt there who man, managed to live through all the horrible things that have happened, but his family didn't, and he's very down on his luck, and he's very upset, and he's having a drink at the bar. Um, and he looks he looks pretty upset and sad. You seem like uh, to think he'd be the kind of guy that would wish for something. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I'm going 
go uh, go up to the bar beside him and order a drink. Uh, how many golds is that? Uh, you can get like, two two drinks for one gold. All right, yeah, I'll do that and order him a drink and say, "You look down on your luck, my friend." He, uh, you know, tear in his beer. He seems very upset. He says. Oh, yeah, my wife died in the ghost explosion, and my son died in the fire earthquake, and uh, my other son died in a goat stampede. Yeah. (laughs) So he's got a bunch of sad stories to tell, of course. I lost my job at the dock when all the, you know. uh, So he's real down on his luck. He says uh, he appreciates you buying the drink. He could barely afford a drink. Uh, But that's all he's got left is drinking. Uh, Huh. Well, what if I told him he could have a, uh, you know, a second shot and get away from this place to a place that, you know, he could have safety and freedom and, you know, the potential for riches and wealth and so much more. He asked what you're selling. What are you selling? Uh, well, I work for a certain organization. <laughs> well. A certain organization. <laughs> I'm trying to say it like... Tyler Perry. Working for a short, short, Yeah. That looks to, you know, help people in ways by uh, rewarding them with wish like uh, I wish like items or, you know, situations. Things that can happen. Uh, wait, wait, what what are you selling? I'm selling a chance that it would fly. An organization. <laughs> so, so spell it out for me. So what do I what do? I do? Why don't you just sign this piece of paper <laughs> and think in your head uh, of a great force that can reckon this crisis going on at the tower in the town. Allow me to take them, and I promise you, you will have infinite fortunes, and you can join me amongst my ranks. He says, I, I don't want any of that. I just want my family back. I just want my wife and kids back. You can <laughs> get your wife and kids back. He Ruth. says, uh, I'll, I'll sign your piece of paper if I can get my wife and kids back. You can get your kids after, but we have to stop the tower. Right now, I promise. I don't care about no damn tower. But the tower is the key to getting your wife and kids back. All the world's riches wait with the tower. I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, but I don't know how me signing this piece of paper is supposed to do something with the tower. I think you're. I think you're drunk. I think you're drunk. I think you're drunk, and I don't want any part of this. A- 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 Avon scheme you're trying to sell here, your Tupperware. I don't want no Tupperware. Can I do a diplomacy check? You can always do a diplomacy check. Yes. Oh, fuck me in these <laughs> rolls today. Oh. That's exactly what he says. He says, fuck you in your rolls today. And he turns <laughs> around and faces the other direction away from you and just drinks. Can I cast command on him to sign the paper? You're going to command him to make a wish? Yeah, you can command him. You can try. Yeah, I'm going to do that. What kind of will save do I have to make to that? Yeah. So, Zero. So, okay. So, yeah. 11. So, I just have to beat that. It's not going to be hard for me. I beat that. He Does he still continue to ignore you when you try to cast your spell? It is, you're making funny noises and wiggling your hands, and he continues to ignore it. Agu blagu flagu, and he's like, whatever. This creep drunk. continues to drink. Yes, drunk hobgoblin. Okay. Uh... Move on to a different person at the bar. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to find someone else. You only have a finite number of contracts. I only have four contracts left. Oh uh, yeah, so wasting it on a wife and kids probably not the. Well, no, that's why I'm trying to get a big Especially problem. because, spoiler alert, a spoiler Maybe. alert, if that guy wished for his wife and kids to come back, they would only come back as zombies anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll do what, I'll <laughs> it's they're broken contracts. No one gets what they wished for. Well, I was trying <laughs> to get him to wish for the army. So well, there's, already, there's an army coming. And 
But no one gets what they wish for. The fact that you are... See, the thing thing is, you made Pilar wish for an army, which means it can't be you wishing for the army. You wishing for an army is you want the army to get the tower, but Pilar, that's not why he would wish for an army, which is why you still have to get the orb before the army gets here. Yeah. You can't use the wish. You have to get, no, someone, else, you have to get someone else to use it for something they want. And it might help you or it might not help you. It, those contracts have to be someone funny. else doing well, something they want. Well, I'm just trying to get it where... I can get whatever I need to to take the tower, and they can believe that I'm going to help them with the tower when I take it and give it back to them, and they can go fuck themselves. Their wife and kids, they can meet them in hell where they'll go after... After all this is over. Yeah. Like, you, gotta, you gotta find someone with a similar motive. I'm not lying. They're gonna meet their family again. They'll yeah. They're but, like I said, he wouldn't wish for the tower. You need to find someone that would want to wish for the tower if you want something like that. But I think you have to find some other way around that uh, whole thing. But, All right. Um, yeah. Um, might be tricky. Pilar was your best bet, and he's getting an army, so he will maybe take the tower, but you won't get to. Yeah. Unless you do, unless you do it before the army gets here. Um, I'm going to... Then you have to get the tower from Pilar, okay. which is going to be even more I'm trouble than Frederick. I'm going to try one more guy, and then I'm going to scribe my bones. Okay. Uh, so try another guy at the bar? bar. Find another guy. Find another sad bar. sack at the bar. Yeah. All right, you find another sad sack at the bar. Uh, he is actually an old orc. Sad sack. Uh, you know. His name is Sad Sack. Yeah, his name is Sad Sook. Sad Sook Orc. <laughs> he very upset. Me have bad time. Me no love you. Uh, so yeah, he seems pretty distraught. Uh, I like that his converse to Tom's. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I love you. That's how they all talk. He's from the same region. They're from the same mountains, remember? He's from the mountains of Reyes. That's how they yeah, talk. I'm going to do a perception to see if he's, he's checking me out since I'm a hobgoblin female. Uh, he seems kind of interested, but he also see, he, you also see that he's like cutting himself. He's you know doing some self mutilation shit, so he seems kind of distracted. And uh, I I'm not your shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what are those hobgob tits? Yeah. I'll buy him a drink. I will go one button lower on my breastplate. Just All right. let him hang loose a little bit. Talk about a breastplate. All right. Yeah. I'm going to buy a drink and walk up to him. All right. So you spend half a gold for another drink? Yep. Or one gold for two drinks? Half a gold for a drink? And you, uh, uh two? Uh, one gold for two? Yeah. All right, you walk over and you bring him a drink. He stops cutting himself and looks up at you and says, Well, that's a surprise. Hey, good looking. <laughs> he says, How's, uh, we don't, how are things going here in Reyes? He says, we don't yeah. see many hobgoblin women around here. No, I'm here for a special assignment. I needed to get to the tower, but some crazy stuff's going down and I have no way to get there. There's fire everywhere. Help me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you, Help me? Oh maybe you could get some buckets of water and put it out. I don't know. Fire. That's <laughs> what I do when fire come. Me put it out with water. <laughs> me well, no love you. If you help me out, maybe I could help you out. You want I carry bucket? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have another way. I mean, it's a little weird sounding, but, you know... You could just wish for the tower to be gone, or for the tower to uh, not be on fire. You should just write it down and then get them to like read. Why? It. Why me wish for that? That make no sense for me. What in it for me? Why me waste wish on put out I fire? Put my tits out. Me like tits. Me would wish for tits before me wish for put out fire. <laughs> you get these if you put out fire with. If me get wish, me just wish for tits. What me not need your tits to get wish, to get fire. Why not you just wish for fire go out? Well, I mean, if you wish for the fire to go out, I mean, you can get, have these tits for a very long time. If you just wish for tits. There's no set time limit on most tits. <laughs> there is set time limit on all tits, friend. <laughs> <laughs> me been alive long time. Oh, gravity, very cruel. Me seen hobgoblin tits before in magazine. Uh, well, I mean, they know hold up well. Well, all I need to do is I 
I just needed you to help me out, but if you don't want to help me out, then, you know, we don't have to do anything, I guess. He says, okay, me drink and cut myself then. <laughs> uh, can I do detect alignment, Old Hill? Yeah. See what he's about? Is he yep. evil? Uh, he's more chaotic, neutral, chaotic, um, neutral, on the border of evil, but, uh, it would seem that he aligns himself with the nearby church of Ergothoa, and while he does seem to be upset, it seems the cutting he's doing pr- might be something more of a religious act than because he's sad. Can I try to cast command on his stupid orc brain? Yeah. <laughs> you uh, can. Would I have, would I have to beat 15? Is that what it was? 11? <laughs> I rolled a 17. <laughs> yeah, right. Your rolls are way better than mine today, Brian. Well, I, got, I got this new dice. Like, it's gray. Yeah. But I have to try something so I don't just have to fucking go into this fucking battle. All right. Uh, there are ways. Yeah. Can I uh, try a diplomacy check with them to see if I could use the runaround of him getting off this <laughs> island? Let me try this. He's not a very powerful person. His mo- his motives aren't going to be for great things like the tower. Besides Pilar, who else was on the council that you might be able to talk to See, that's for a the, wish? That's, yeah, what about I thought everyone on the council was dead. <laughs> I don't think they're dead. If they, I didn't, I don't have a notebook, so it's not canon. I didn't write it down, so as far as I don't remember that happening. It might have happened, but I got pretty drunk and I didn't write it down. So as far as I'm concerned, it, it might not have happened. Maybe we just dreamed it happened. Hey now, hey now, don't dream it's over. We do these things in several hour long uh, installments when we play, uh, so there's much more to listen to. If, if you got the time and you feel like it, uh, check out the next installment of this D&D Dinner Theater.